Hey guys, what is up? Love of Learning here, teaching you how to write better, faster, and safer code. Today we're talking about a weird thing that I think a lot of new programmers struggle with. Tether files are this thing that we kind of learn on day one. We have to pound include standard io.h, but we don't really understand why header files exist. And then when we go to make multi-module programs that use multiple C files, we struggle to include header files in our process and don't really know where they're appropriate and not appropriate. Today, we're gonna to break down the process of how the linker works under the hood, what the compiler expects when you're using external functions and why the header file ties all of this together. Let's get right into it. Here we have some C code that's doing some basic C stuff. We have our int main, which is our entry point to our program, and it's taking the standard main prototype. We have the number of arguments to our program and the vector to those arguments. We print f hello world just like we're used to, but then we do something funky. We say that an int x, a variable, is equal to low level add, which is a function that we have not defined yet. It turns out that low level add is actually a function that is exposed in a library that someone else, me, has written called lib low level math.so. And we could go into and cat this library.c and figure out what that function does. And we also could, in theory, compile in lib library.c into our program statically by just including it into our build process, including this code in our code and going from there. But maybe this library is closed source. Maybe we have to, because of other dependencies in our build process, have to just depend on the .so file. The problem with the code as written is if we try to compile this, we'll get a bunch of really nasty errors. Now, the interesting part about these errors is that one is actually a compile time error and the other is a link time error. The two of them being one, an implicit declaration of a function called low level add, because again, in our code, we have not defined this function yet, but we are calling it. And then two, we try to link in this function at link time after it compiles. And the linker says, hey, you tried to run a function called low level add. I trusted you knew what you were talking about because I only called the implicit declaration a warning, but I got to the linker phase and I couldn't find the symbol low level add. Before we go any further in this video, I want to break down what the two words compile time and link time mean. I think they're kind of tossed around a lot uh, and go over the heads of new programmers. So let's kind of break down what the compile process looks like at compile time and link time and define those two so we can understand these two errors and how it relates to the header file. When you run the traditional command to compile the program, we'll do GCC tech O, um, call my program P and we compile in P.C, right? And I'm, I'm truncating that because my handwriting is terrible. Uh, when you actually invoke GCC tech O and, and do the whole command, there are two things that happen. There's what is called a compile pass, where it compiles all of your code into object files. So compiler produces objects, OBJs, and then the linker pass or the link phase takes all the object files. These are like an input to the link phase and it outputs an executable file. And in some cases it could also output a, a library file, but the final product of the link phase is one of these two things. Now, it's really important to understand what is happening specifically in each of these phases and what the output is and how the header file plays into that. Now, when you're writing code, let's say that this is our, our piece of code here, right? It's, it's a square and it has some code in it. And let's say in that code, for example, I have a function called foo, right? And then inside of that function also, I have a function that's called add, but add is not defined. So during the compile phase, right? This is not the link phase, this is at compile time. The compiler will throw that first error that says, hey, you implicitly defined the function add, but it won't throw an error yet. What's going to happen is the output of the compile phase is this object file. I like to think of them as like a spiky ball, right? So this ball is my, let's say it's my p.o, because if this came from my p.c file, now it's p.o, and the ball has this spike on it that's like an arrow. And the arrow is saying essentially, hey, by the way, guys, I still depend on the add function. So let's say now that the program also has another file called m.c and the compile phase produces an, uh, an m.o object file and it has no dependencies, so our spiky ball analogy is just a ball by itself, right? So the compile phase will run and it will compile all these programs independently into objects. Once it's done compiling, then the linker phase comes in. Now the second phase, the linker phase, is to do kind of what the name implies, right? It's to link all the things together. If we have our spiky ball analogy where we have this one object file here that depends on add and maybe this other ball here, 
the end product the linker wants to produce is an executable that is just all of these balls attached together in the proper format so that all the dependencies are met, right? This thing here is the output of the linker. Now, the issue we ran into before where it said undefined reference to the thing is because the linker was unable to find where the dependency to low level add was in all the object files. So we have a bunch of problems we have to solve here. Now with our library lib low level at math.so, which again could be a closed source library, we are given an open source header file. The header file acts as two things. One, for us as the programmer, it's kind of an API that tells us how we can use the library. It has good documentation, like what do the parameters do and what does it return? And the internal functionality of that could be a proprietary black box that maybe the manufacturer doesn't want us to know about or the author doesn't want us to know about, but they expose to us how do we use the function. And then also it exposes a uh, header guard. Basically, this prevents us from including the header multiple times and having recursive dependencies or circular requirements in our, pro in our programs. So don't worry about that one too much. But this is the meat and potatoes. So the reason we use header files is it creates this symbol in our programs so that the compiler doesn't yell at us when we try to implicitly define things. And so by including our library's header file using lib slash low level math dot h, which is the path to the header file. And again, these quotes mean it's a local file that's in the current directory. And these carrots mean that it's a global header file that exists somewhere else in a, a, a library that we installed on the system system wide. So by including that, we will get rid of one of the compiler errors. Now you see our implicit declaration went away, but we still have this low level add error. Let's talk about what happened there. So by adding this line to line one, we include a header file into the program. And that gives us the line that essentially says low level add the function is declared, but we have not defined the function yet. And again, a definition is we say how the thing works. The declaration is just saying that the thing exists. So this is a declaration and not a definition. So what we need to do finally, is we have to link against the library by giving a linker flag to GCC. The linker flag is we have to do tack L and say low level math and then giving a library directory of the print working directory slash lib to tell it where to look for this library. And then now we have a program by typing LDD that depends on a few things, it depends on our standard Linux libraries like Linux VDSO and libc and then the loader. But then also now our program depends on lib low level math. And then we can run our program by saying LD library path equals print working directory print working directory slash lib and then run our program and we eventually run our code and then we also link in at runtime the shared object and that calls the external function that is defined in our header file and this line of thinking applies not only to using external libraries like we just did before but also using multi-module code that we write ourselves for example if i have my main function here in a piece of code called code.c but I want to write a separate module that represents a different kind of functionality that shouldn't be in the same code as main. What I can do is I can make another C file and I can write the functionality for that module here. Here, the module being some kind of client, right? Maybe this is a structure that gets allocated when you connect from a server or something. So in client.c, we are going to also include client.h and that .h does the exact same thing. It exposes the API to the programmer of how the client module is supposed to behave and how they use the functionality. So we define our public structures, like what the client even is here. It's just some buffer. You can put other data in that structure. And then we declare what that function does. The function called create client returns a client star. Okay, awesome. And then when we want to actually use create client in our code, all we have to do is pound include client.h right there. Really simple. Now there is one tweak we have to do to our compilation process. It will prevent things from breaking. Now in a perfect world, we'd be using a make file to automate this process. But instead of doing the traditional GCC tack O, the thing, the thing.c, we're gonna skip running the linker step automatically and only do the compilation step by using the tack C flag. By using the tack C flag, we're gonna say, hey, turn our code.c into main.o, the intermediate object file. And again, that's that, that spiky ball that has the arrow that says, hey, by the way, I depend on create client. Don't forget about that. And we do the exact same thing on client.o, right? We say GCC tax C, so compile our client code into the client object file. And then to glue them all together, we invoke the linker, which is that third and final stage here, but says, hey, 
output the full binary, our final program called code, and the sources are no longer C code, they're the intermediate object files. So we compile that, and then we run our code, and you can't see it happening, but underneath the hood, uh, client.c is getting ran, and it's allocating the client as defined in the C code. And the only thing that code.c knows about it is, is what is exposed in the header file. That's how header files work. If you didn't know how they work, now you do. Hey guys, before you go, I am working on some seriously awesome courses on my new website, lowlevel.academy. Courses are gonna range from everything from zero to hero C programming, to threading in C, to network code that doesn't suck in C, to just how to get good at Git. If you're interested in any of those, go check out, sign up. The first course, Zero to Hero C Programmer, starts October 1st. We'll see you there. Now, another thing new programmers wanna learn about is if it's okay to use numbers in their code, like are numbers allowed, is, or is that legal? Go watch this video here while I talk about how numbers can actually be problematic in your code if you don't use them correctly. We'll see you there. Go click on the video. All right, goodbye.